And there shall come among them a great leader, who with his wisdom and understanding shall break the chains and bonds which bind them, unshackle their wrists and ankles, their cobwebs from their eyes and ears, and thereby make them free. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you the Negro Moses of the 20th century, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., in a rally held at Los Angeles, California, June 17th, 1962, as he addressed a gathering on the problems of civil rights and equality. And here is the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., at Zion Hill, as he talks of the dilemma and the challenge. The dilemma and the challenge facing the Negro today. You will remember that it was in the year of 1619 when the first Negro slaves landed on the shores of this nation. They were brought here from the soils of Africa, and the Negro lived amid this system of slavery for 244 years. For all of these years, he was a thing to be used, not a person to be respected. And even after slavery ended, the Negro discovered that he was confronting a new type of slavery because racial segregation is nothing but slavery covered up with certain niceties of complexity. And so the Negro lived with physical slavery 244 years. He has been a victim of racial segregation for almost 100 years. Now the Negro's dilemma is this, and it's a serious dilemma. In spite of the fact that we have been victims of slavery for 200 years, and 44 years, in spite of the fact that we have lived with segregated conditions for 100 years, the demands of history require that we be as productive, as resourceful, and as responsible as the people who never had these disadvantages. Here we are, as a people, having experienced political domination, economic exploitation, segregation, and humiliation for well now 344 years, and yet the demands of history make it necessary for us to be as productive and as responsible as the people who never had these experiences. This is our dilemma. He who gets behind in a race must forever remain behind or run faster than the man in front. This is our dilemma. But this dilemma is at one and the same time a great challenge. We are challenged to mobilize our resources to mobilize all of the constructive forces that we can muster and to make a creative contribution in the life of our nation. And I would like to suggest this afternoon some of the things that we must do to grapple with this dilemma and meet the challenge of the hour. I would like to say first that we must develop and maintain a sense of dignity and self-respect. We must We must not allow anybody or any force to make us feel that we do not count. We must believe in our souls that we are somebody, that we are significant, that we are worthful, 
We must walk the streets of life every day with this sense of dignity and this sense of somebodiness.